Well, the clock is ticking. It's just one week till Christmas. Where did the time go? Feels like Advent just began, and now we are looking at its final days. Our tendency at this point in the Advent journey is to rush to Christmas and leave Advent behind. And part of this is natural. This next week will be so busy with last minute shopping or decorating, cooking or cleaning or celebrating. But we should resist the urge to ditch Advent because today's message is a very powerful one, one that should not be missed. This is the final week of our Advent message series titled, Let Us Pray. Over the past month, we've talked about how prayer is the perfect way to prepare for Christmas. Because when we pray to God honestly and sincerely, we're better able to stay balanced amid all the busyness of this season. And that's because prayer reminds us of what matters most in life. As we conclude our series, the readings today reveal an important aspect of prayer. Prayer is an experience of God's presence. Prayer as presence. Let's dive in. The Old Testament reading we heard came from the prophet Micah. Now, Micah had a vision of the type of savior that God would send to rescue his chosen people. Many people expected that the Messiah would be a warrior king or a general who would wage war against Israel's enemies. Micah saw something very different. Here's the prophecy we heard today. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord. So not a warrior, not a general, not a fighter, but a shepherd. That might sound like an odd type of savior until you stop and consider all that a shepherd does. The shepherd spends day and night caring for his flock. He leads them to green pastures where the sheep can graze and to streams of water where they can drink. The shepherd protects the flock from wolves and robbers. He binds up the wounds of any sheep that is hurt and goes in search of any sheep that gets lost. It's a 24-7 job. He doesn't sleep in or take a day off, and the shepherd never abandons the sheep. Because he's always with the flock, the shepherd gets to know each of them individually, and the sheep get to know him. They will respond to his voice alone. And Micah writes, this is who the Messiah will be. So it's no surprise that when Jesus came, he told people, I am the good shepherd. I will lay down my life for my sheep. And he did this by dying on the cross to save them, to save us. So this is who God is. And this is who we encounter when we open ourselves up to God in prayer. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God calls each of us by name. God is with us every second of the day, every step of the way. So anytime you and I take time to pray, whenever we place ourselves in the Lord's presence, this is who we meet, Christ the Good Shepherd. He leads and guides us, nourishes and sustains us, seeks us out when we are lost, binds up our wounds when we are hurting. He is always, always present. And prayer is a powerful way for you to be in the presence of this good and gentle shepherd. I want to encourage you to take some time for prayer in these final days of Advent. Find some quiet time in your day, whether it's morning or night, whatever works best for you, and just rest in the presence of God. Our Advent prayer guide can be found in this week's bulletin and on the Advent page of our website. It has some great tips on how to pray and a question or topic for each day. And this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., 
our church will be open for quiet prayer. And Father Treston from the monastery and I will be available for confession to reconcile anyone who feels lost or is in need of healing. Now let me turn to today's gospel reading. The passage we heard takes place right after the angel Gabriel gave Mary the news that God had chosen her to be the mother of the Messiah. At the same time, the angel told Mary that her cousin Elizabeth was also expecting a child. So Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. This line is one that is easy to skip over. But think about this. Mary had just been told that she is to give birth to the Savior of the world, the very Messiah that Micah and all the prophets foretold. And what did Mary do? Well, first, let's look at what Mary didn't do. She didn't decide to spend the next nine months in hiding from everyone, didn't take to her bed, didn't wrap herself in bubble wrap. Under the circumstances, those would have been reasonable and safe precautions for someone about to give birth to the Messiah. Instead, Mary went to be with her cousin Elizabeth. Someone Mary loved needed her, so she set out and traveled to the hill country in haste. In other words, as God was present with Mary, she knew that she needed to share that presence by being with and serving others. This is about as powerful an example of discipleship as we will ever find, and why the church refers to Mary as the model disciple. Now, where does prayer tie into this? Well, without prayer, without that regular daily conversation with God, you and I can lose focus. We can get confused about our purpose in life or get distracted with unimportant things. And whenever that happens, our lives get unbalanced. We can become selfish and self-centered and blind to the needs of those around us. With prayer, we become more like Mary. We imitate her example. We discover God's presence with us and are able to be God's presence to others. So as we get ready to celebrate Christmas next weekend, let me ask you this question. Who are the people in your life that God is asking you to love and serve right now? And how can you do that? One easy way is to invite them to Christmas Mass. Ask them to join you in person or online. We all have people in our lives who are probably feeling a little lost. The pandemic, the economy, so many things have resulted in hurt and questioning and doubt. Christmas is the one time of the year when people who don't normally attend church are more open to an invitation. So imitate Mary's example. Reach out to them in love. Invite them to join you for Mass this Christmas. An experience of God's presence is the perfect gift and may be just what they need right now. To close out this Advent series, Let's take just a few moments of silence to reflect on Mary's example and think about the people in our lives God is calling us to serve. <laughs> 